Hi, Philip A. McClyman here. Just wanted to thank you for listening to my podcast. It's a blast making it, and an even bigger blast knowing you are enjoying it. If you are enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting it with a one-time donation of $3, which is about the price of a cheap cup of coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes, right there at the top. I am usually drinking coffee when I record the podcast, so it kind of makes sense. Okay, thanks again for listening. On to the next episode, and the next cup of coffee. Chapter 13 Nicole's head began to nod as she fought sleep. At first, the vibrations from the safety tread on the side of the road would bring her back around, but eventually she became immune to even that. When she went down for the count, it was almost the end. The GTO drifted and would have gone out in a blaze if not for the front wheels suddenly cutting sharply to the left. The squealing tires and radical serpentine course the car took brought her awake in an instant. Nicole fought the wheel as the car spun around and came to a screeching stop. Now fully awake, Nicole white-knuckled the steering wheel and stared east on the westbound lane. She regained her composure and decided that now was a pretty good time to stop for the night. She cranked the wheel around and pointed the car back west, coming to a stop by the side of the road. She had not planned to find a motel to stay in anyhow, not after friendlies. Any fear of others coming upon her while she slept in the car had been allayed by driving all day and not seeing another living soul. She almost wondered if finding Sam was an anomaly. Maybe there really was nobody else left. The thought almost made her start the car up again and try to drive straight through to Colorado but common sense prevailed. She looked over at Sam, who just sat there. Hey, I need to sleep in the front seat. If something happens and we need to bolt, I can't be climbing over seats and pushing you out of the way, understand? So you got the back, yeah? She said. Sam just stared out the side window, and Nicole stared at him. She was too tired and blinked first. In a huff, she turned and climbed in the back. Fine! But you know what, Sam? You're making it real easy to work up the nerve to leave you by the side of the road, she said, flopping in the back seat. Nicole punched some throw pillows and lay down, pulling a curtain over her. A second later, she popped her head back up and stared at Sam. He hadn't moved. You got the front seat and you're not even going to sleep, she said. She slammed her head back into the pillow. I don't know what good it will do, keeping watch she said, her words trailing off. People on watch have to actually say something if they... Fatigue sapped her will to fight, and she drifted off to sleep. The morning light streamed through the back window and lit Nicole's face. The sun was not what woke her, though. Nicole's nose began to twitch. As she began to come around, she rubbed it. Sleep retreated and her eyes opened, squinting at the brightness. She made a face and sat up in a hurry. Damn it, Sam, did you far... Nicole froze. A herd of shufflers approached the car. She stared at them in rapt silence. She counted eleven. They were in varying stages of decay, but none were capable of quick movement. They came up on both sides of the car slowly, but did not touch it. Nicole watched the first of them pass. She looked at Sam, who was still sitting in the front seat. She noticed him watching the dead shuffle by, his grip tightening on his axe handle. Sam, if there was ever a time to check back in, now ain't it. Just keep on being you for a few more minutes, okay? She said. For the first time, she was relieved when he did not respond. The last of the herd passed the rear of the car, and Nicole turned and looked at them through the back window. Okay, Sam, just another minute, and... Nicole turned and her words were cut short as she watched Sam reach for the handle and open the door. No, 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 she said, 
her voice a shouted whisper, as Sam stepped out and closed the door behind him. Nicole spun around and stared aghast out the back, watching as Sam fell in line behind the dead. Sam! Sam! she said, every part of her wanting to scream. She pressed her hands against the window and watched helplessly as Sam neared the closest shuffler. Before she could do anything, Sam swung his axe handle and crushed its head. The shuffler went down, and Sam stepped over it. Panic seized Nicole as she saw the rest of the dead sense his presence and the meal he represented. Slowly, one by one, they turned and advanced on him. She wasted no time. Turning and climbing over the seat, she landed behind the steering wheel. You just made my decision a whole lot easier, you crazy... Nicole looked in the rearview mirror as she was about to crank the engine. She was prepared to see Sam being torn apart. Part of her had wanted to look, to confirm in her mind that she had no choice but to leave him. What she was not prepared to see was Sam swinging for the fences and hitting grand slams. She turned quickly, her eyes locked on the scene out her back window. The dead were slow and not in a tight group. As they approached, Sam laid into them, knocking heads clean off shoulders and busting others wide open. Two, three, then four went down. Seeming not content to wait for them to come to him, Sam waded into the group and was soon surrounded. The dead were oblivious to all but their hunger and did nothing to avoid the danger in Sam's hands. He swung the axe handle in a wide circle, keeping them at bay. He brought it up in vicious uppercuts that broke their necks. Their heads flopped uselessly on their shoulders before they went down. They reached for him, but Sam did not flinch or retreat. Like a whirling dervish, Sam batted arms away, smashed teeth and crushed skulls. Soon, all but two lay on the ground around him. Nicole found herself again. She grabbed her rifle and jumped from the car. Placing her arms on the roof, she drew a bead on the lead zombie. She was about to shoot when Sam stepped in her line of fire. He swung and the zombie's head crushed. It went down in a heap at his feet. The last zombie approached, its legs so badly damaged it could only hobble in a twisting motion. Sam walked up to it and stared at it full in the face. The zombie locked eyes with him and hissed in anticipation of fresh kill. Sam did not move, not when the shuffler was ten feet from him, not when it was five. It reached out and grasped Sam's shoulder, and yet Sam did not blink. Sam! Nicole said, her voice an unbridled scream now. Sam brought up the axe handle fast and shattered the thing's jaw, sending its head back, a loud crack signifying breaking vertebrae. The shoveler's head lolled and its body swayed as Sam took a step back and swung. A vicious crack sounded and the zombie's head left its body, sailing out across the road. It bounced twice, then disappeared down the embankment. Nicole let out her breath in a long sigh. She pushed off the car and approached Sam. Sam stared at his axe handle, no longer recognizable as wood. It was covered in blood and gore. Sam did not seem to notice her as he spun and hurled the axe handle across the road in the direction of the shuffler's head. He did not say a word as he walked back to the car, opened the door, and climbed in the passenger side. Nicole watched as he closed the door behind him. He remained motionless as Nicole opened her door and climbed in. Gripping the wheel, she stared ahead, too. Look, Sam, I know you loved that job, and that it was your home, she said, struggling for the right words. I hated that fucking job, Sam said. Nicole turned and looked at him in surprise. Sam turned and smiled at her. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Sam Jennings, he said, holding out his hand. Nicole let out a laugh. Well, I'm Nicole Bennett. Pleased to meet you, Sam Jennings, she said, shaking his hand. Sam smiled and let out a heavy sigh. I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat, he said. Nicole held Sam's gaze, then looked forward, a smile on her face. I think you're wrong, she said, cranking the ignition. Sam furred his brow and stared at the side of her head. Wrong? About what? he said. Nicole dropped the GTO into drive and pulled out on the highway. Your name may be Sam Jennings, but you're a lethal weapon. That makes you a Martin Riggs in my book, she said, bringing the big car up to cruising speed. Chapter 14
It turned out to be a beautiful day. The sun shone from a cloudless blue sky. The temperature was a balmy 74 degrees. Nicole cruised down the two-lane highway, right hand on the wheel. Her left elbow rested out the open window. Next to her, Sam matched her position. His right elbow rested out the passenger side. His left hand kept time with Fleetwood Mac's Don't Stop that blared from the car stereo. Sam looked around the landscape, the toothpick from the IHOP where they scavenged breakfast sticking out of his mouth. Sam felt like a new man, like a burden had been taken off his shoulders. As he listened to Lindsay, Stevie, and Christine belt out the promise of a better day ahead, he tried to sing along. He echoed the last word of the last line he heard in an effort to learn the words. Nicole kept her eyes forward. She was glad to be on the road again, but did not allow herself the luxury of a better mood. She kept her eyes forward and tried to ignore Sam's off-key call-and-response exercise with what had always been one of her favorite songs. She would probably admit it still was, though she felt like the words of encouragement were empty. As Sam tried to commit the words to memory, she became more agitated. Christine McVie was in the middle of telling Nicole and Sam to just think what tomorrow will do, with Sam keying off do when Nicole's agitation reached a breaking point. Sam, she said. Sam looked over quickly at Nicole, the toothpick that he had been rolling around in his mouth, momentarily drooping. Who sings this song, Sam? Nicole said. Sam pulled the toothpick from his mouth, grabbed the MP3 player, and looked at the screen. It says Fleetwood Mac, Sam said. Nicole glared over at Sam. Then how about we let them, Nicole said. Sam smiled. Ha! Good one. Old one, but a good one, Sam said, as he lay the MP3 player back down on the seat. Nicole turned her agitation back down the road in front of her. Undaunted, Sam resumed tapping out the bead on his knee. The toothpick went back in his mouth, and his elbow went back out the window. He still tried to get the lyrics, but not so as Nicole could hear him. They cruised on for another twenty minutes when they approached an overpass. The highway crossed a wide aqueduct. Apart from a shallow trickle of stream running down the middle, the waterway was dry. Nicole looked over at it from the distance and noticed movement below. Wandering in aimless circles were a group of shufflers. She slowed the GTO as they approached. Sam looked over. We stopping? he said. Nicole kept her eyes on the dead as she stopped the car midway across the aqueduct. She put the car in park and shut off the engine. If you're going to ride with me, I've got to know that you can handle yourself. I mean, going berserk with the lumber is one thing, but it's a good way to become zombie chow, yeah? She said. Before Sam could offer a reply, Nicole opened the door and climbed out. Sam watched her reach in the back and grab two of the rifles. Grab a couple of those boxes, she said. Sam reached over and grabbed two boxes of the ammo and got out. Nicole and Sam approached the guardrail of the overpass and looked down. The dead below wandered back and forth. Occasionally, one would reach the steep incline of the side walls and try to walk up it, only to stumble and roll back down. Set the boxes there, Nicole said. Sam placed the boxes on the guardrail. You even shoot a gun before? Nicole said. Sam looked down at the shufflers. I had a BB gun once, he said. He watched Nicole ready her weapon and mimicked her actions. Well, this won't be much different. Only a couple of rules. Aim small, miss small, and hold your breath when you release. Got it? Nicole said. She shouldered her rifle and drew a bead on one of the dead below, a skinny shuffler with short, kinky hair and a thick black mustache. She let out her breath and fired twice. Both shots penetrated its skull, and the zombie dropped to its knees and fell on its face. None of the others seemed to notice, as they maintained their circuitous course around the aqueduct. "'Whoa! I think you just killed Borat! His sister's gonna be pissed!' Sam said. He shouldered his gun and picked a target, a big round woman with huge breasts and a face that looked like it collided with a cosmetic factory. Swollen tissue and thick makeup sat on her face below hair that had been so teased and blow-dried it formed a halo twice as big as her head. Sam let out his breath and squeezed the trigger. The gun did not fire. Sam lowered it and looked it over. Nicole waited impatiently as Sam failed to find the remedy. 
Losing her patience, Nicole reached over and flipped off the safety for him. This is what I'm talking about, Sam, she said. Chagrin, Sam shouldered his rifle and aimed at the big woman. Later, Dolly, he said and fired. The big woman's head twitched at the bullet's impact, but she did not go down. Sam lowered his weapon a second time and looked down into the aqueduct. Nicole scanned the shufflers below, then looked over at Sam. Which one were you trying to hit? she said. Sam gestured in the distance. Dolly Parton, he said. Nicole looked down and then saw her. No, Sam, that's too far away. An effective zombie killing range on a weapon this caliber is about 40 yards. Anything beyond that we don't care about, she said. Sam frowned. Sorry, I just hate country music, you know, Sam said. Nicole looked at the dead. There, shoot that one. There, she said, pointing. Sam looked down. Which one? He said. Nicole pointed. Mullet boy, there, she said. Sam saw where she pointed. A lanky shuffler with a gore-coated mullet wandered below. He was dressed in a wife-beater, tucked into skinny jeans over biker boots. Sam shouldered the weapon and drew a bead on the back of the shuffler's mullet. And you shouldn't try to shoot Dolly anyway. The woman's a legend, Nicole said. Sam squeezed the trigger twice in rapid succession, and Mullet Boy dropped to the ground. Just call me Mullet Hunter, Sam said, a big grin spreading over his face. Nicole rolled her eyes and squeezed off two rounds into a large shuffler with lamb chop sideburns. It plopped down into the stream, the water circling around it slowly. Hey, that looked like Elvis. He's a legend, too, Sam said. Nicole lowered her rifle and waited for another to come into range. Yeah, but old fat Elvis. I like skinny young Elvis, Nicole said. The two sat in silence for several minutes. Sam looked away and sighed. So I guess you're wondering what I was doing still working in that store, huh? It's just that... Nicole cut him off. Look, Sam, you're coming with me, and that's fine, I guess. But I'm really not interested in your life story, you know? We have one job to do, and that is to get to Colorado disease-free, understand? She said. Sam remained silent. Neither said much to each other as they spent the next hour plunking zombies that wandered within range. When they were empty, they reloaded their magazines. Nicole slung the rifle over her shoulder and turned to go. That's enough for now, she said. Sam slung his rifle and followed her back to the car. So, how'd I do? He said. Nicole did not turn around. You did okay, she said as she put her rifle in the back seat and jumped behind the wheel. Sam was all smiles as he stuck his rifle in the back and climbed in beside her. Nicole cranked the GTO and hit the gas. The car sped away as Sam tried to learn the words to You Make Loving Fun. Extinction.